You know, sometimes you just want your drums to be able to talk to you. Spend so much time with them. It'd be nice if they could just kind of give you some feedback and communicate with you. You know, kind of like, how are you today? What are you doing for the rest of the night? I am making a YouTube video and I am having a lot of fun. Of course, this is not a video on how you can get your drums to speak as in using words, but it's more about how you can get your drums to sound like they're speaking, like they're talking, like they're communicating to people, audience, people who are listening to what you're playing. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to make your drums sound like they're talking when you play time or take a solo. Let's do it. everyone welcome back to another jazz drummer q-tip of the week the q stands for davis no i'm kidding of course it stands for quincy my name is quincy davis and i'm so happy that you stopped by if you are new welcome to my channel please consider subscribing because i put out weekly lessons that many drummers have found helpful and i'm confident you will too and of course if you enjoy the video press that like button and please leave comments i love hearing from you and i do try to get back to everybody Hey, before I jump into the lesson, I got a quick question for you, and I want you to leave your answer down or answers down below in the comment section. Uh, my question is, who are some of your favorite drummers to listen to who you feel can really make the drums sound like they are talking, like they're really being expressive and they're communicating ideas and feelings? Let me know in the comment section down below. All right, so I'm going to give you eight ways that you can start to make your drums sound like they're really talking and like you're really communicating ideas and thoughts and feelings and emotions to people listening to you. If you're not doing that, if we're not doing that, then what's the point of playing, right? Um, so the first thing that you can start to do... trying to demonstrate dynamics dynamics can sound make something that sounds very simple um, sound much more interesting and it actually it just means that you're putting thought into how in all of these things that I'm going to show you it just it just shows that you're putting more thought into the how not just what you're playing but how you're playing it so add some dynamics to what you're playing See? See, I can get really quiet. And then surprise you with something, with a smack in the face with the cymbals. Even when you're playing time, so if I'm here and I go, see, that came out of nowhere, right? See what I mean? So essentially, I'm kind of adding little little accents here and there, um, and they are accents, but ultimate, ult ultimately an accent uh, is changing the dynamics of what you're doing. So you can be playing. Here you go. See how I drop down? You know, just dropping down in dynamics suddenly intensifies the time. And really makes it sound like you're communicating, like you're talking on the drums and cymbals. Try it. Hey, I just want to make sure you're aware of my digital download store where you can download lots of fun and useful play along tracks that I've designed exactly for you and for me, drummers.
All right, so the next thing that you can add to your playing that's going to really make it sound like you're starting to communicate with your drums and you're getting them to sound like they're talking um, is repeat yourself. Obviously, when we talk, we don't necessarily want to repeat ourselves a lot. Um, and we have to be careful not to repeat our ourselves too much on the drums. However, when applied in a musical way, it can sound really good. Uh, one of the classic solos, right? Max Roach. And he, he repeats it. Right, he goes on and play, and and it it it, it kind of builds off of that thing, but he comes back to it. So he's using repetition to kind of remind you what the theme is of his solo. So use that concept and see what happens. So, see, there's my little thing, and then I can play something else. You see, so I did a let's say a a. And then I changed it, did something different. Then I came back to it and it makes it much more memorable. It's easy to follow. It works. It makes it sound like you're actually saying something that you want the listener to hear. So that last tip leads perfectly into this next one. That last tip leads perfectly into this next one, which is play melodically right when you when you repeat yourself then you're starting to create melodies because melodies good melodies actually often repeat themselves right so see what i mean ah so and obviously we don't have chords we don't have notes that we can press down we have rhythms so i like to use the term uh i like to think of it that we're we're creating rhythmic melodies right rhythmic melodies um and you can do that when you're playing time you see Oh, you know, why do I shout when I when I play? I think sometimes I do feel like I play some things that I feel are really communicating something and talking. And that excites me. I think that's why sometimes in these videos I get excited and I just kind of uh, shout out, you know, kind of like I'm in church or something. Um, but that's the goal. I'm, I'm always striving to play something that I I know is is communicating a feeling or uh, expressing an emotion to whoever is listening. So that's why, in case you were wondering, um, work on it in your comping. Ba, ba, sing what you're comping. Ba, bo, ba, on, on. Ba, ba, bo, ba, on, on. Ba, 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 Boom, boom, boom. See what I mean? Oh, ah, oh, ah, ba, oh, oh, ah, oh, ah, ba, 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 boom. Ba, 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 Right? Super simple ideas. Um, and, and, but it's really important that even when you're comping, you're trying to communicate a feeling and you're not just thinking about just chatter, random notes. That happens a lot. You'd be surprised how many drummers just don't really think about what their left hand and their bass drummer is doing while they're playing time. Um, but if you can start to think like, okay, you're trying to say something, right? Hey, that sounds familiar. Check out the video. I'll, I'll put the link up there. Um, you're trying to say something even when you're playing time. So. Oh, oh. Hey, I said a lot there. Sometimes you don't want to say that much, you know, especially when you're playing behind a solo. You got to be careful not to 
get carried away, but it's a great thing to, to practice for sure. And that leads perfectly into the next thing. If you notice, I was using a very common device in actually black churches. It comes out of the black church and even further back to West Africa um, and this concept of call and response, call and response. You say something and you get a response. Well, you can do that just alone by yourself. Plain time, comping. Let's see what that sounds like. Uh, 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 and so it's a constant it's actually a constant um if if you kind of listen to max roach or philly joe jones or art taylor or mel lewis sometimes um you can get a sense of uh, frankie dunlop you get a sense of this kind of back and forth call and response Con it's like a conversation right that's what a conversation is uh, I say something, you say something back, and then I respond to that. And it's just constant. It never ends, really, uh, until we say, hey, see you later. <laughs> but um, so think of your comping in the same way. You can do the same thing when you're solo. Oh. See what I mean? Even though I'm playing the same thing, when I voice it around, it sounds different. It sounds like the Times has commentary on it. I come back to the snare, and it says the same thing it said before. And then, hey, the, the floor time wants to get in on the action. And now it sounds like we're communicating. Now it sounds like we are what? Talking. Okay, so this next one is tricky because it requires a let's say a, a high level of um of rhythmic comfortability right and nimbleness and what i'm talking about is playing in the cracks of the beat right so if we're always playing things that are on the beat on the strong beats of the time um it's going to limit how expressive we can be okay so i'll give you an example so if i'm playing time and this is this is an extreme example Obviously, most of you will not do this. So that's an extreme example. But you can see there's a limitation on how much, how expressive I can be with that. Uh, but even by just moving a few of those notes off the beat and getting into the cracks of the time, it will sound more expressive and sound more like I'm communicating, I'm talking. So, right, we go, ba, boom, ba, ba, boom, boom. See, I'm still playing a lot of things on the beat, but now I'm starting to incorporate some, what we call hemiolas, three over four, groupings of three, right? Even though I'm, they're all on the beat, because it's a syncopated rhythm, it has a little more feeling sounds a little more expressive right and then when i start to introduce the offbeat the eighth note well, n2 n3 n4 those are the smaller cracks that will get even more expressive when you play it there you go see uh, uh. and if you're not comfortable with that do it a lot do it with the metronome uh. oh oh uh. Well, then when you play on the beat, it has more feeling, right? Because you're really intending it. You're trying to say something. Did you hear that? The snare drum's acting up. I gotta, I gotta have a little talk with the snare drum. Okay, we're we're cool now. All right, we we worked it out. 
he he was saying some bad words. So in that case, I was playing triplets, right? Wow. So that really gets into the smaller cracks of the time, which, again, will make it sound like I'm communicating, like the drums are talking. So this is what I'm talking about. The more comfortable you are with rhythm, the more expressive you can be in the in the smaller cracks that you can kind of access to make your drums sound like they're talking. Okay, this next one is something that even I have to remind myself, um, we don't always have to play, right? So you take a solo, someone says, hey, take a solo, and you go, Arr! you feel like you have to just constantly play. But it's the moments when you're not playing that actually sound like you're saying a lot more. Whoa, that's deep. Uh, let's see what happens. So um, I'll try to leave a little more space. Play less, mean more. That's the idea. I'll put the link up there because I did a video kind of along those lines. Oh. So I'm 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 kind of taking advantage of all the things that I've actually already talked about, especially dynamics. Um, but you, you can hear the space that I'm using. And as long as everything you play is still on the grid and in the groove, then it's going to feel good. And it's not going to sound like you don't know what you're doing or you're like you're off or you're, you're trying to figure out what to play. You're, you're intending the space. When you intend the space and you're still on the groove, uh, on the grid, then you're good to go. So, you see what I mean? All right, so the last two things I'm going to tell you to get your drums to sound like they're uh, talking more um, are intangibles. They're not things that I can say, hey, do this, don't do this, do this, try this. Do this. They're less technical. Um, and what they are are things that all your favorite drummers, who you're going to list down below in the comments section, uh, the drummers that you feel really are expressive and, and make, can make their drums sound like they're talking. It's something that they all do. It's playing with passion. It's playing with a conviction, intentionality, right? So whenever you see Philly Joe Jones, whenever you see uh, Ed Sof, whenever you see these wonderful drummers, Billy Cobham, right? Vinnie Caluda, any genre, all the great drummers of their, uh, in any genre or style, they all play with a certain level of conviction. Steve Jordan, right? Nate Smith. Um, Philly Joe Jones, Max Roach. I always talk about Max Roach and Philly Joe Jones, but, um, you know, all of the great players, they all play with so much conviction and intentionality and passion that when they play, you cannot help but to feel what they're doing, even if it's not perfect. In fact, it's never perfect, but it doesn't matter as long as you feel like you're they're communicating something. They have something to communicate and they're communicating it to you. Um, in a very clear and unfiltered way. Hey, that's really, really exciting. So strive to do that and add that to your playing, and it's going to make your, your drums sound like they're, they're starting to talk even more than they already are. All right, so the last thing I'm going to tell you, and it's probably the most important thing that we can do, and the reason why we play, the reason why we love playing the drums and it's to have fun. We have to have fun when we play. If we're not having fun when we play, then what is the point? I don't know anybody who plays the drums or does uh, plays the bass or drives cars or anything fun like that, any kind of art. Why would you do it if you're not having fun doing it? Um, so as important as all the other things that I told you are, the most important thing is to have fun. And when you have fun, most likely the people listening to you are also having fun. And that's how you're going to get closer to making it sound like your drums 
are talking. Okay. In addition, make sure you're listening. You're paying attention. You're checking out drummers who really can communicate with the drums. And you're going to list some of those drummers in the comment section below and be as musical with your approach to playing the drums, whatever genre, be as musical as possible. And it's going to sound good. Okay. So until the next time, have fun, practice hard, but practice smart. Take care. Bye-bye.